welcome back to MGS TV. I'm your host, Winnie Wu. And now we've got Mr. Ken Jolly, Executive Vice President, Asia for Shop Entertainment. Ken, welcome to MGS TV. Lovely to see you. Well, it's now widely known that Bali is in the process of acquiring Shop Entertainment. When will this be completed? Um, it's publicly announced um, the deal will close before the year end. Shelf Entertainment Store Food Do Chai, otherwise known as Fu Babies, seem to have positioned itself as a serious rival to the iconic Fa 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 product. It has quickly spread throughout the Asian gaming market, and we seem to be seeing it on many gaming floors in the region. Is Fu Babies the Fa 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 of the future? We just um, do Fu Do Chai or Fu Babies, um, particularly for the Macau market initially, and uh, when we put it out in the market. Um, we just trialled it in a couple of the casinos here in Macau and the results were absolutely outstanding. So yes, we've been very happy with the product um, as it is and we've been able to now take it to other markets and roll it out and even take it back into Australia as a standalone progressive. So um, yeah, it's a great concept, um, it's very Chinese graphic and theme and uh, the mathematics package is obviously outstanding, hence it's performing so well around the marketplace. So we're very, very happy with the position. Recently, we have seen an explosion in stadium-style live dealers' products in Macau with over 3,000 units now in the market. Shop Entertainment is still yet to break into the Macau market. Can you comment on that? Oh, look, um, th there's a number of um, reasons uh, we're not in the Macau market at this stage, but I think it's, it's important to understand this is a global company with a global pro and this is a global product for us. We are rolling this product around um, other parts of Asia. We're doing very successful in markets like the Philippines, Korea. Um, in fact, most of the terminals in Singapore are our terminals, right out through Indochina. So, um, yeah, look, uh, one day um, it'll, it'll come to other markets as well. Ken, you've worked in the Asian market for many years, and your company supplies all six concessionaires. The products you sell cover both table games and electronic gaming. This put you in a great position to comment on the industry as a whole. What opportunities and challenges do you see emerging for the Asian gaming market over the next 10 years? Well, certainly uh, Shaf's very um, privileged to be in a good position because you're right, we're in a very diverse product range. We cover both the electronic gaming industry and also the live table industry. I mean, when you talk about challenges or opportunities in the future, obviously in Asia, there's going to be growth of casinos throughout other markets like Japan are talking about it, Taiwan, obviously there's further growth in, in the Philippines and um, just countries that don't have gaming even in Asia, so there'll be growth. Um, and with each market there's obviously issues and challenges that need to be met as we go along and as the market grows. But um, look, I think the Asian future is very, very positive. You spend quite a bit of your time in Asian jurisdictions outside of Macau. Of course, Singapore and Philippine markets are well established. But what is your view on emerging Asian markets? In what countries do the opportunities lie? Um, well, there's, there's growth in all markets. Um, and obviously, as it's such a broad product uh, range, we're all the time trying to promote our products to even the existing markets. Um, obviously, the, the Cambodia's, the Vietnam's, Laos. Um, but certainly, as, the, as a sort of indigo, the, as the other markets come on, such as Taiwan, further expansion in Korea, additional casinos in the Philippines, in the entertainment city area, and uh, Japan. They're all great opportunities that are they're just going to add to Asia. And you consider where Asia was 15, 20 years ago, to where it is today as a gaming mecca. It's growing, and of course, Macau is really driven in and shown the forefront of that. Of course, Shuffle Entertainment's former name was Shuffle Master, which evokes the company's shuffle machine manufacturing roots. Are shufflers still an important part of your business? Oh, very much so. Um, what people are putting in um, shuffle mach shuffling machines, there's a range of different ones that do different things from continuous shufflers right through to eight deck shufflers. Um, sh a shuffling machine is all about a number of things. Obviously, added security and control for the casino to make sure that everything is um, operating and, and happening above board. And secondly, it's about the speed of the game. So players, players and casinos like to see the game kept at a good pace and obviously having a shuffling machine that keeps the steady pace of the game. So yeah, you know, look, it, it, it's, it was the, the original part of the company. Uh, the company's diversified and grown since then. 
It certainly suffers a large portion of what we do throughout the world and particularly here in Asia. Ken, you've been described as a legend of the gaming industry. No doubt part of this is due to the many countries you've worked in and many decades of experience. But what other factors do you think might have led to this almost mythical cult status? Well, thank you for the uh, legendary status. I'm not sure that's totally deserved, but however, yeah, look, I've had a great career in um, gaming. Um, it started in Australia, it was, uh, I went to New Zealand, I, was, I ran a business there, I was in the United States for a couple of years, um, I was in Europe and then sales and marketing across there, and then I came back to Asia about, I came to Asia about 10 years ago, worked for a couple of companies in the Asian market and had some global roles in those jobs. Um, yeah, look, I, I guess it's experience. Um, it's about being driven, it's about uh, putting together good, strong, profitable businesses for the people that I've worked for. So thank you for the legendary status. <laughs> what is the typical operational life of a car shuffling machine? Look, um, like all technical products, we're all the time trying to innovate and make the products better. So as we um, develop, and as a company, we continue to develop our products for all the features and benefits to get better and stronger. So the bottom line is, um, when a new model comes out, um, some casinos will have the, the old model or the model before that and look to upgrade. But typically, it's as a new model rolls out, that's three to five years. Um, but it's, again, it comes back to the benefits and features of the new product. Well, Ken, thank you for your time. Really lovely, thank you. And we'll see you next time on MTF TV.